may know some about the project, but I'll give you a little bit of an introduction. Again, as Tom said, it's 36 units. Uh, currently, the site is vacant. It's one of the pieces of land that you as a council rezone. It's one of the pieces of land that you as a council rezoned to the TVZ, TVC zone in 2013. Um, that was before I got involved, but I, I am aware there was a fair little bit of controversy regarding that rezoning and subsequent um, project proposals. Uh, Rosbera Brothers and I are partners on it. Uh, I, I'm happy to say that, that this project is, can, is not fair to characterize it as controversial anymore, I don't believe. I think it can be characterized now as having a high degree of consensus. Uh, that includes pretty much all our neighbors. Um, probably not every single neighbor, but I've rarely done a project where that's been the case. But we have reached accommodation with all our major neighbors, and everybody seems to be quite happy with what we're doing. Uh, to the point that we got a really, I'd have to say, it was an enthusiastic planning board approval, very clean in and out uh, earlier this week. Um, can certainly talk about that more if you'd like, uh, but very, very happy to report that I'm not bringing you a, you know, a, a hornet's nest to ask you to approve. I'm bringing you something that I think has some consensus. Um, and the, the way these projects work, if you guys are familiar with the Bessie School project in Scarborough, that's the other one in town that you have. It's a main housing, affordable housing project. So there's a competitive process each year. Each fall, developers submit these applications, attempt to score enough points based on the number of different criteria to get their financing and get the tax credits, and then they move forward. Um, last year, we applied and didn't have enough points to move forward, and we're in the process now of adding points to our score so we can hit enough of the policy points main housing fields are important to therefore be able to, to build the, the project. There's a site, 5 Griffin Road, right in down there behind the uh, Dunstan Dental Plaza there. <coughs> and there's a site plan which was approved on Monday night. I won't spend much time on that, but it's basically coming in down Griffin Road into a parking area and then a building tucked down in among the, with a, a tree buffer behind it and a tree buffer to the right of it as you look at it, uh, trying to keep it away from the more meadow area down to the bottom of the site there where there's really no uh, way to hide the view from the surrounding houses. Previous site plans for the site had buildings kind of all over the site, which I think was one of the catalytic points of uh, opposition. <coughs> Here is a rendering, which was also the first slide, so you can see what the project will look like. Uh, here is what one looks like on the ground. This is Osprey Circle in South Portland, which is going up uh, in the, on the slope at uh, Brick Hill. You've seen it going up over the past year. That's a project of mine as well. It's just finishing up. So this will be a, this is also senior housing, be a somewhat similar design to this, look and feel. So that's kind of what they look like in real life. Elevations, I'm just going to move past them because we uh, have limited time and I can go back to any of these slides any time. TIF, I assume, you know, you guys know, I'm sure you've approved TIFs and no TIFs, but um, basically the idea with the TIF is that something comes in with a low tax value and we're going to come in and try to do a development to add tax value. Um, and with a, uh, with a TIF in place, that additional value can be sheltered. And what the sheltering means is that when you add a new dollar of tax value in, on your assessment, you lose a good chunk of it because your county taxes go up based on the formulas relative to the county. Your state aid education goes down because you're now a higher value community. And very importantly, you get less revenue sharing from the state. Each town is different. So each town has a different percentage of how much of each dollar is lost. In Scarborough, it happens to be 58%. So when you develop a new project in Scarborough and adds a dollar of tax value, 58 cents of it you, don't, you never see because you lose it due to these impacts. So what the TIF does is it shelters that and it allows it to stay in Scarborough and it allows it to go toward whatever uses it might be put, which are then restricted. Uh, and one of the uses that we would like some of it to be put is to help our project be successful. <coughs> now an affordable housing TIF, the mechanics of that are exactly as, as I just stated. Uh, most TIFs you hear about are for commercial businesses to put in a sewer line or to do this thing or that thing to help a big business succeed. That's kind of how they're known. Uh, this is a housing TIF. It's authorized under a different statute. It has very similar rules but different sets of rules. It's not administered by DECD. It's administered by Maine Housing, and it's specifically enacted to help affordable housing projects go forward because it helps the, the rents are very, it's very hard to make the operating budgets of these projects work because the rents are fixed. 
but the gas costs and the electricity costs and the maintenance costs and the snow plowing is not fixed. So the program that we're applying for gives us tax credits that we sell, give us the capital to build the project, but essentially you're on your own to operate it after that. So a housing TIF was seen as a really important policy tool at the state level to help these projects be successful. So, and I'll explain this a little bit more later, but the TIF, you know, the TIF, the conventional TIF wisdom is that developer is going to get a TIF and put it in their pocket. This TIF actually ends up in Maine Housing's pocket, not ours, and I'll explain why that happens. But what it does is it gives us points on this application. It gives us three points, which are, which is a lot of points and very critical and really will help us differentiate between a winner and a loser and help us try to move forward with this project. <coughs> So the, the specific Griffin Road TIF that we're asking for. So to get these three points, the bare minimum we, we have to have is 50% TIF for 15 years. So that's what we're asking for. We, ha we added one more year on there to give us a second try in case we're not successful this year at Maine Housing. But that's we're asking for the minimum that we have to ask for. There's no, no opportunity for us to come back and ask for less because we're already asking for the minimum. Um, w one question is, is does the town want to shelter all the taxes, all the increment, because then the town would be able to do something with its share other than give it back to the development for operating costs. It, it could be a number of things. One thing we talked about is a potential revolving loan fund for affordable housing. This is at the direction of, of staff, of something that it could be used for, and you have a fund in place with no money in it, and they thought maybe that's a, a good place to put it, but it's what it would do would be to keep that keep 58 cents out of every dollar in Scarborough, but it would restrict what you can use it for. So it's a little bit of a little bit of a trade-off. Right. Yeah. So the actual technical TIF is 17-year TIF because it takes so one year to build it TIF. and the one-year cushion and the 15 years. Yeah, that that that's not a horrible way to characterize it. It's yeah, that, it's cl close enough for hand grenades, I guess. But I'll, I've got some numbers that actually pin down exactly what it would be in a, in a couple of slides. And it's just the incremental taxes. The base taxes are low. I'll, 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 a couple slides, I'm going to be there. Yeah. So again, I mentioned why we need this TIF to be successful. The scoring system changes every year, but generally stays the same. Uh, the, the winners last year ranged from 49 to 55 points. Um, one of my projects in Topsom was the lowest scoring winner, and the waiting list ha started at 48. So it's three points is really a big, a big deal. Last year we scored 39. Uh, we knew we weren't probably going to be successful because we hadn't gone through the planning board. That's worth four points to, to what they call readiness. So we've just achieved that. So we have those four points, which is great. A TIF is worth three. Uh, something called a community revitalization plan, which is which is beyond the scope of tonight, but something else we're talking about is worth two. Um, and again, it's no guarantee that we're going to win if we have these points, but it's pretty sure we're not going to get it if we don't. So um, that's something that we would like to work toward. Um, again, the, the, the TIF doesn't go in, in Rockies in my pocket. It goes, main housing sees the benefit of it and it helps main housing scarce resources go further is what it does. So a little tax credit 101, the, 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 this is about a five, five and a half million dollar project. About 70% of that money is going to come from the sale of these tax credits that we would get awarded. So we get the tax credits, we sell them, we take the money, we pay the contractor and that's it. Um, the tax credits are never quite enough to build the project, so about 
comes is, is from pots of money Maine Housing has, various pots of money, bond money, uh, real estate transfer tax money, v different things they use to, they call it subsidy in general. About 20% of it comes from subsidy and then about 10% of it in this market area with strong healthy rents will come from actual traditional commercial amortizing debt. Uh, the reason the debt piece is so small is because again those rents are fixed. We can't charge $1,200 a month. We have to charge $700 a month. Meanwhile, our expenses are going to be $600 a month or $650 a month. So you really, the, the, the way a developer makes money is on, on a developer fee at the beginning, but there's not a lot of money to make money out of running the thing. And that's the way it's structured because main housing will, they'll give you just as much debt as they can to keep your cash flow at a certain level. So the more income you have, the more debt they'll give you. So now if you think about a TIF and what a TIF does is it returns taxes to the project. So in this example, it'll be about $12,500 a year. All of a sudden, we've got $12,500 more dollars a year in our budget. Well, that's great, but Maine Housing says, oh, okay, well, our interest rate's 5.75%. Now you can afford $217,000 more debt and we can give you $217,000 less subsidy. And from their policy point of view, it makes good sense because they, they can give you as much debt as they want, but they only have a very precious amount of subsidy they can give out. So they want to make that go as far as they can. And they've said it made a policy decision to say, hey, any town that's willing to give a TIF to a developer to help us do more housing, we're going to give that preferential scoring in the process. So that's why they do it. Um, it's on the one side, it, it, you know, it, it bugs you, but on the other side, you can see why they do it. Um, so really, this project's going to get underwritten just like a bank would underwrite it at Main Housing. We're going to net out the same. We're not going to make any more or less money from cash flow, whether or not you give us a TIF or how big a TIF you give us. But what it will do is give us those three points that can make all the difference between grass and building. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, and here's where we get back to the, the comment about, about the taxes. So right now we're paying $3,000 a year in taxes. That's, that's going to happen whether or not we ever build anything. So that's based on the assessed value of the raw land. <coughs> now the, we've, we've worked with the assessor and looked at some comps, and we've got a pretty good feeling that if the project is finished and gets built, it's going to be assessed at about a million eight, and therefore there's about 25000 more dollars in taxes. Now that's the increment, and that's what gets sheltered. So we, we would propose that 12.5 of that goes back to the project and 12.5 of that does not. So that means 15.5 to town, 12.5 to developer. So it isn't quite 50-50 because of those base taxes of 3,000, but it's, again, it's, it's close enough for estimation. So w what happens to that? Say you didn't give us a TIF. Say we were able to build this thing without a TIF, move forward. Um, you'd lose, again, you'd lose about 58% of all that new revenue. So that $3,000 that Rocky and I are paying in taxes now, you're seeing about 1260 of it ultimately hit your general fund. And if we, if we built the thing without a TIF, you'd see about 10005 more in your general fund. Um, but again, I'm, I'm here to tell you I don't think we can do it without this TIF, so I don't, I don't think you'll see it without a TIF. <coughs> No, if what I said was there'll be the ta the total taxes would be 28, three plus 25, three base, 25 new. All, all I was saying with that slide was that $25,000 is really only getting you 10,500 because of this loss to fiscal formulas, which is what a TIF will help prevent. Without the sheltering value. Right. So oh, with the TIF, oh. how does the town do with the TIF? Uh, that's the next slide. <laughs> So I see a reminder on my computer. We have a council meeting coming up at seven. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so with a fifty percent TIF. Now this is <laughs> this is irrespective about of what you would do with your half if you chose to TIF it. But twelve thousand five hundred would go to the project. Um, if you didn't sh if you didn't shelter that, 
7,200 of it would flow outside the town as opposed to staying in the project and helping your local seniors. Again, helps the project score higher. So what the town will get, without doing any tiffing of its own, the town will get 15500 in taxes. So even if you don't tiff your half or do anything, just by giving us this tiff and helping the project succeed, your gross taxes are going to go up fivefold. You know, so without doing anything. Uh, you can optimize and do better for yourself by tiffing it and sheltering your own revenue. Um, but, the, and, you know, and the reason I can, make, I can say that with a straight face is this isn't family housing. It's not two and three bedrooms. I'm pretty confident I'm not going to put a lot of kids in your schools with senior housing. You know, senior housing is not going to place heavy demands on your, on your services. And the, you've got... How is that going to be defined? What's that? How is that going to be defined? Senior housing by main housing definition is 55 plus. These are all these are all one bedroom apartments. Yep. All of them. Every single one. Uh, there was talk in, at one point, though, wasn't there, of, of there being a couple? Project. It wasn't a senior, but I'm sorry. it was an okay. affordable project that was discussed at one point, and okay. due to terms of neighbors and, and some other things. Right. I remember that. that. No, no, this no is, this is, yep. Yeah. Well, initially there were multiple bedroom yeah. units, mm -hmm. but a handful of them. Yeah, okay, all right, thank and you. And the project has gotten smaller over time with less parking over time and fewer bedrooms over time and more affordable over time, and it's gone to seniors over time. <laughs> so it was bigger with families and parking, and now it's smaller with seniors and affordable with less parking. So it's, okay. it's gone, I think, in the direction that everyone's wanted to see it. Um, so I've talked about a lot of these benefits already, the scoring, the housing, uh, the consensus we've been able to build, the financial aspects of it, and really this, this TVC rezone that you guys got behind a few years ago, this is the kind of project that now you enable to happen with that zoning, and, and here we are. So you're what the decision you made then is a direct, res the direct result of it is I'm here now partnering with them because I'm a multifamily developer and I can do this now. So this is the reality that you that you voted on. Um, quick timeline, again, we got our planning board approval this week. Uh, we would need the TIF to be approved by the town before we could submit it to Maine Housing. There's a public hearing involved and some, some steps like that. I'd like to bring this to you for a vote next month if it's appropriate, if the timing works, because the application to Maine Housing is, the big application to Maine Housing is due October 9th. And we have to have that vote 45 days prior to the round, which if you did the math, you'd find it was August 25th. So there's that, there's that one chance to get that done in time uh, for this fall. So that's the end of my presentation, and we've got a whole 10 minutes left, and I'll stop talking now. But thank you for your time. Questions? <coughs> So one of the considerations, if, if we want to entertain this, is to consider, although frankly we don't have to do for them, uh, we could choose to tip it ourselves and say we shelter benefits uh, ourselves. But I've come to appreciate that uh, these points are critical for this project success, and I think that's a point that's been raised countless times at the, with the alliance. And I know there's a number of members here this evening. Certainly, Councilor Holbrook has been at these meetings as, as well, and this is as close as we've been. Forever to actually see tangible affordable housing uh, being a, provided in this town, and if we could be part of that solution, um, it seems to make sense. I also see it as something to offer senior citizens. Mm -hmm. That's affordable. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The other part of the equation, I'll just say, and, and we've not made any decisions, but staff has kind of probed around what the potential is of tipping the project 100% and reaping further shelter benefits. The downside of that is that money is not available to the general fund for general purposes. It's restricted. Uh, one of the things the, the council, this council has done is created this uh, affordable initiative reserve fund uh, that was initiated.
initially intended to seek money under this uh, new um, density bonus. Uh, it doesn't have any money in it, but it's created. It has very clear guidelines as to what it's using. And it's, uh, we've done some testing with main housing and allocating our other half of the tax revenue toward that fund. Uh, it would be acceptable. So that's something that I think we should be able to consider um, because that furthers our, our initiatives for affordable housing. I'm going to jump on that train of thought is that Housing Alliance does meet um, tomorrow evening to start knowing you know, what this comes out of them as a recommendation. Um, you know, would be you know, a bit of a consensus of maybe what we feel tonight. You know, if everyone does that opposed to 100%, then I guess we know the answer. But um, certainly, uh, th there's a lot of things that happen in that other 50%. Spend hours talking about all the different ways you could use that money. Doesn't necessarily mean buying land and doing another project, but certainly you can afford, you know, if there's more funds available, which has always been the answer, how do you get housing started? Well, maybe we don't build it, but we can offset a sewer line for, for a project that's, you know, upcoming and, and worthy and, you know, those sorts of things. So it, it's not huge money. Yeah. So. Yeah, the, the difference is if you shelter half versus shelter all, you right. get a better bang for your buck. But no, sheltering is sheltering. Yeah. One of the things the Alliance, I think, you know, I don't speak for them, but I've come to appreciate, I think our best opportunities um, have been and will continue to be partnering with others to, to provide affordable housing. I would frankly categorize this as a partnership, but having some money to put into a deal, whether it's a sewer line or land, in some other way, I think it's going to be one of the best ways we can actually see some benefits to our, our efforts. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your attention and great questions. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll provide a copy of this.